This is the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Friday Celebrity Talk Show Series. Jim Masters here. And look at your screen. Look who's with us. Critically acclaimed singer and songwriter Rebecca Folsom is joining us from Boulder, Colorado, in the foothills of the beautiful Rocky Mountains in Colorado, where she's got about a foot of snow outside her door. Matter of fact, she added some extra power cords to her internet, so everything will be fine on her end. She's actually going to perform live for us as well. Yep, we've got music. We've got our famous Jameis Lovety and terrific conversation coming up in just a minute. I'm, again, Jim Masters. It's so cool to have you here. If this is your first time stopping by our popular Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Celebrity Talk Show series, good to have you with us. Uh, tell your friends. Don't keep it a secret. We really love having you here and everybody that's been uh, joining us literally from all around the world, it's incredible. We continue to just grow by viewers and subscribers to our YouTube channel, but also just people who are really enjoying what we're doing here, bringing back the Lost Art of Conversation, having a good time, lots of entertainment, lots of laughs, and uh, lots of cool guests who come in from all different backgrounds too. And gang, if you would like to comment, we say this in the beginning of the show for new folks who don't know this. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Jim Masters TV, it's the channel you are watching this on right now. Just hit that red subscribe button. You know what happens? You get to be a part of the JMS Lovety squad. That's really cool. That's a proud badge to have. It doesn't cost anything. And you can comment live when the shows are on live in the JMS Lovety chat room yeah that's right you can actually do that right now you can say hello to one another you can uh exchange recipes or <laughs> whatever you want to do and uh, say hello to us as well might have an opportunity to sprinkle a comment or two on the screen and if you want to support what we're doing and help us grow and uh everything that we do here there's super chat super emoji super stickers um, that's in the Lovety chat room right now, uh, as the show is on live. And then at any time, 24 seven on every episode of the gym master show series, there's a little heart icon called super thanks. And you can actually uh, click on that 24 seven on our YouTube channel and help support what we're doing here as well. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of guests, hundreds, if not thousands of hours, thousands of hours, because you're thinking, you know, some of these shows have gone pretty lengthy. So thousands of hours of uh, entertainment and good times in our talk show series here for all of you, which I think is really, really cool. Again, welcome to the show, gang. Uh, for those who watch all the time, we thank you. For those who are joining us for the first time, I think you've stumbled upon something pretty cool. And hopefully you'll enjoy what we present to you here on the show. Rebecca, again, is joining us, and uh, we're so excited about it. She was raised, born and raised in Boulder, Colorado. Her formative years were inspired by the alternative pulse that beats in a town nestled at the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. She grew up running trails and writing songs amongst the pines and aspens, capturing inspiration from the plethora of spiritual teachings, along with the sanctuary of the natural world. Seasoned in a 20-year Zen Buddhism study, Rebecca meets these changing times with a much-needed, wonderful, centered way about her in a relaxing mode, too. And that is in the wisdom of uncertainty. It's in this open spirit of being teachable that Rebecca has traversed the many bridges that led her to the latest album, which is Sanctuary. You can see it on the screen right there. And with Sanctuary... Rebecca uses her platform to serve the underprivileged, to inspire collective change, and to create an international movement, kind of like we're doing here on the Gym Master Show with our Lovity. In the spirit of collaboration, Rebecca wrote the songs for Sanctuary with activist Zen Masters, New York Times bestselling authors, Forbes, America's 100 self-made women, social justice organizations, and those impacted compromised, disempowered situations. Prisoners, refugees, Vietnam vets, homeless, elderly, and many others came together in creative circles with Rebecca. And together, the superficialities fell away. They traveled the dark and light, crossed the bridge of common humanity where the sunlight of spirit shines in even the darkest of places. And there they shared in the authentic conversations and deep listening. They found tears and laughter and the natural inclination to share common human values. Rebecca has played on BBC television and radio for an audience of 
uh, almost 2 million. She's played at the beautiful Red Rock Amphitheater in Colorado, the Blue Bird and Opryland in Nashville, Tennessee, numerous festivals as well. The Song Sanctuary was a semifinalist in the 2021 International Songwriting Competition, and her album Extraordinary Days debuted with the song Better Times, hitting number one on the National Folk Radio DJ chart, spending five months on the top 50 National Americana Country Radio chart as well. For more than 30 years, she's been a transformational teacher and a leadership coach as well, nicknamed the creative shaman by her clients and of all ages and backgrounds. Rebecca has inspired thousands of individuals, large and small leadership teams of national and international corporations. She helps all seekers break down limitations and open more creative flow and embrace more amazing life experiences. Her vocal empowerment workshops galvanize individual freedom and the creation of conscious communities. Really incredible. Her philanthropy is incredible as well, serving the Blue Sky Bridge Child Advocacy Organization, the Women's Foundation of Colorado, Boulder Shelter for the Homeless, and uh, OneTreePlanted.org, and the International Rescue Committee, just to name a few. You know, she's released 11 albums, and again, with her vibrant coaching career as well, Rebecca has also written and published two books of poetry and created numerous paintings of fine art. That's just on a Thursday. She's done all that. No. <laughs> it's really cool to have her here. We're so excited. We're going to share music. We're going to share good times. Lots of Jameis Lovety. Join us, folks. Rebecca Folsom's in the house on the Jim Master Show Live. Rebecca, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Jim. What a what a treat to be here. Oh, it's my privilege and pleasure to have you with us. And you got a foot of snow plus happening out here. Yes, and it's still snowing. So, but you know, honestly, we're as far as droughts and everything, we're super happy to have it. So. Are you a lover of snow? Do you like to get out in it? That's no, no, I am not a lover of snow. I am a lover of Colorado and high mountains and running in the trees and all of that. But the snow I have learned to love. I have a couple of friends who are very much like skiers and love the snow. And they, they've taught me how to love winter. Yes, which is great, right? I mean, yes. you know, wh wherever you are in life and whatever life brings you, you just make the best of it, right? You know That's that. Right. That's right. And your music and your coaching and everything you do really speaks to that, right? Mm. Yeah, you know, I just I just love your your levity. I that part to me is so in alignment with everything that I want to be doing, you know, in the world and at this point and you know, sometimes I think um I'm a, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess you could call it Pollyanna or, but I, I'm a positive person. Like, I yeah. feel like there's, there's always there's nothing wrong with Pollyanna or idealistic. I think we've gone so far away <laughs> from that, that that actually is refreshing. That's yeah. actually like retro and new school. Right. <laughs> Bring it back, you know. It's in. It's, it's gone so far out. It's That's coming it. back in. Come on, bring on that apple pie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, still good to look at issues. You know, I, that that's part of like what we did with the album was taking a look and turning and facing things that are not working well, you know, that, that are issues and, and yet still looking for the hope and the humanity and where's the solution. And you know, that's always yes. the question. I like the title too, uh, Sanctuary. Is, is that that's tying into uh, where you are, right? The yes. the beauty of nature and the sanctuary that you are in, being yes. located there in uh, Colorado. It's yes. a great name. There it is on the screen, gang. Congratulations yes. on that. Beautiful combination of birch trees. If you look closely at that image, it's looking up through birch trees and also a cathedral. Isn't so nice? yeah, so beautiful. We we really were trying to bring together sacred space on many levels. Yes. So you know, sacred space of uh, outside and nature and and all of that, and also you know places that we go that are sacred spaces, and ultimately the sacred space here. You know that it, it's like, what can I do in this moment? You know, with people that are around me, with what's going on around me, how can I be a place that is a sanctuary? You know, that's exactly. safe for people. Right, yeah. exactly. Have you yeah. always had that mindset or did that develop, you know, as time has gone on in your life? I think that has developed. You know, I, I definitely had, 
I definitely had a feeling of positivity, like joy. I had an innate joy. And, and then there were traumas and things that happened in my life that I got more scared, mm. um, <clears throat> where I became more constricted in, in my thinking and, and, and my embodiment. And um, it's been a process of opening that up, working with belief systems and trusting, you know, beginning to yeah, yeah. trust and, uh, and trust that the universe has my back no matter what's happening. You know, that yes. there's, and that one is actually really, really helped me. I have to say that uh, one of my uh, colleagues and mentors, uh, Gay Hendricks, I don't know if you know Gay, but he's mm. got some fabulous books, New York Times bestseller yes. and his wife, Katie Hendricks. And, um, and he talks about when something seems like it's going wrong. I've been applying this lately. When something feels like it's going wrong that you say, well, how can we turn this into fun and profit? <laughs> I like that. We just did this recently. My brother F and P. F and P. <laughs> fun and profit. You know, sometimes things are so scary looking that you're like feel like you're going to get hit by lightning when you mm -hmm. say something like that in that situation. Like it's serious business. And but the, every time I've invoked it, like every time I've been, well, and rather than oh no, this is terrible, and yeah, you know, is to move into well, how can we turn this into fun and profit? Like what? How does this work? And we. Um, it, it just a, lot, a couple of situations happened just recently with that, where I was on tour, I was in Montana with my whole band. So I'm, I'm running, hurting a bunch of musicians, you know, that are great people. And, um, and our flight, you know, the dreaded words you never want to hear when you're flying mechanical mm. difficulties. And oh, yeah, no. so we don't know. And they're giving out vouchers. You're going to spend the night, you know, like, and get your dinner and that kind of thing. And, and we, and we just, I just said, well, how can we turn this into fun and profit? And so we got our tickets for the next day. And, and I thought, oh, we'll just, uh, we'll stick around. We'll just see just if something happens. So we went, we got our free dinner. And then the, all, as we're finishing our dinner and yucking it up, having a good time, um, the, they announced, oh, the flight is now boarding. So you can go home. And so we quickly changed our tickets back and got upgraded into first class and because of the way that, that everything got moved around and, uh, and I thought, wait, this really did work out. We got a free dinner upgrade into first class and we're going home, you know? Not bad, so, huh? Yeah. So, and those things, you know, they happen even in bigger, bigger levels. So. What do you attribute it's, that to? An I angel know, watching over or? More, I think embodiment. Like there, I really think that the world, you know, because I'm a singer, it, it I think there's so much that happens in resonance. Mm -hmm. So if I'm resonating fear or, yes. or um, scarcity or, you know, that kind of thing, it's like, it's like of attraction type thing. Exactly. Yeah. So like the universe is going to bring that to me. Like that's what it's going to mirror like, like attracts like. And, um, and with that, if I can pause and breathe and shift from fear and move into uh Ah, oh, a sense of wonder, you know, mm -hmm. a sense of like curiosity, like, wow, how is this going with that element of trust that I was talking about that, you know, that really the whole flow of the universe is working in my favor because I'm part of the universe. So, you know, with that, it's like, oh, okay. I opened to that. And then the universe brings me all these interesting surprises is what I find. Like the magic, the magic opens up. You were born there in that beautiful area. When did music start to enter your life? What are some of those sources of inspiration for you? Family yeah. or family for sure. Yeah. For sure. My, uh, my family was a singing family and they, because my parents were really. And in fact, we had a rule at the dinner table that uh, no singing at the dinner table because <laughs> Everyone would, would want to, long and it, you know, just be this cacophony. Tonight we've got the mashed potatoes <laughs> and the steak and the peas. <laughs> That's true. You make fun, but my brother was like, I love asparagus. Yeah. You know, there would be those kind of. Something about the word asparagus actually works. <laughs> and spaghetti, spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. Ravioli. So it definitely was in in the field you know it was just something you did and my mom was an artist and well she became an artist <clears throat> she didn't start out as an artist um she really was a mom you know mm. and then moved into uh making pottery and she was a yoga teacher and yeah and so there and she we had artists all around so artists were teaching us how to block print and you know how to 
paint t-shirts and do things like that. So, so there was always this element of creativity mm. in the house, which really was, I've learned over time, like is a huge gift. I, a gift I didn't even know to appreciate. And has been passed down because you've absorbed it. Cause in addition to being a singer songwriter, you're also uh, an artist as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Painter. Yeah. yeah. And poet. And poet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. When so you start doing art. that. When I start doing that, you know, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I did a lot of poetry, you know, the the angstful teenage poetry about love. Yeah, right. <laughs> about love. So there, there was Not that. Not quite love it yet, just love. No, no, <laughs> just love, you know, just uh, that that 14-year-old, 13-year-old love. And uh, yeah, so I didn't. It actually came that the poetry books were born out of I had lived in Nashville part-time. My record label was out there and my girl group, the Rhythm Angels, uh, was based out there. And so I live part-time here because my sweetie is here, my husband, and he didn't want to move to Nashville. And is there he was in so music much... also? No, not at all. No, he's a very uh, grounded human being. Which so he's is... the yang to your ying. Yes, yes. He's the rock to my bird, you know, that flies around. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I forgot the question now. <laughs> well, you're talking about poetry and painting when all that started to come out oh, for yeah. you as well. So Nashville, you know, that was years of writing and, you know, everything I was doing in Nashville at that time was about trying to make it big, you know, really big and get a hit song. And, mm -hmm. you know, so there was all this kind of leaning outside of myself trying to write for Nashville, you know, write for um, <clears throat> the, publici the publicity, the publicity publishers yeah. that were, um, buying. And, you know, we did have some success and everything. And that was great. It, it, you know, they weren't the songs that we were actually pitching, you know, they were funny. They were more personal or sort of quirky songs that it, it did well. But um, I came off of that stint and I came home and I was like, you know, I just don't feel like writing commercially at all. <clears throat> I want to write um, from inside of me. I just want to write for me. I'm going to write for me. And so I did sort of a beatnik thing. And every morning I go to the coffee house and I would write a poem and I called it the poem du jour. And, um, and from there, uh, about two months later, I realized I had written two books of poetry. I was like, oh my goodness, this is actually something that could be used and uh, got it published. And, uh, and they were born you know, out of that. Wow. And it was wonderful. It changed my writing. It really changed my songwriting because instead of trying to write for other, I started getting a little bit more internal and trust myself that, that it's like, Oh, how I feel and what my story can be, um, can be understood universally. And I, I think actually my writing got a lot better at that point. Yeah. So, you know, Nashville and then writing the poetry books and there's always sort of these little eras that, that change, you know, that something happens and, um, and the music followed you through all of that, right? All of it. All of it. Yeah. So when you were a kid or a teen, who were you listening to? Who were some of the artists that you had on your radio or, you know, iPod or CD player or in the car? Who were you listening to? Who inspired you? You know, it's amazing to say this because she just had her beautiful win at the Grammys. Bonnie Raitt was oh, one of them. Oh, yes. Yeah. Bonnie Raitt was like one of my favorites. Mm. And I still sing a couple of her songs, um, you know, periodically. Actually, actually, it reminds me to say happy birthday today to somebody who was a guest on our show twice. And it is her birthday today, the one and only Melissa Manchester. Oh. Yeah. Happy wonderful. birthday, Melissa Manchester <laughs> from all your friends here at the Gym Master Show Live. Yeah, she was a guest twice and we had epic conversations and and today's her birthday, and yesterday was Florence Henderson. Uh, happy birthday in heaven to Florence Henderson. But uh, yeah, so Bonnie Raitt. Were there Bonnie others Raitt as well? Everyone. Absolutely. Joni Mitchell. You know, I, I just always oh, yeah. felt like I was born in the wrong era. You know, that too it, late. it was too late. You know, I wanted to be in Laurel Canyon and be with all those songwriters and, <clears throat> you know, fall in love with 
with James Taylor and <laughs> Pat Stevens and you know that whole thing. Um, I liked the lifestyle too. I just yeah. you know all of it seemed so attractive to me, and you know now I'm happy to be you know where I am, where you that. are. <clears throat> yeah, and I loved like Elton John and um, Etta James, Janis Joplin. Oh know, yeah, we're all. What came first for you, the actual singing and performing or the songwriting? Hmm. You know, they really kind of were born at the same time. They were. I mean, huh? even when I was like around 10, I would make up shows and yeah. um, sing songs. And then I would gather up neighborhood people and, and have a show. And we did that in. too in the garage, the backyard, <laughs> the neighborhood people. Thank God for those neighborhood people. Right? They but helped they out with the plays board. and they bought our lemonade on our lemonade stands. Right, right. <laughs> the neighborhood people. Yeah. yeah. That's great. So you did that, huh? So you were yeah. you were always creative as a kid. Yeah, very much so. You know, I did um I did hit, you know, a very, very difficult time uh, when I was around 14. And and that that till about 16 or 17, um I stopped all creativity. I just, um, you know, I don't know how, how deep into all of that I should go, but, uh, you know, just big challenges. <clears throat> we went from a very happy, comfortable home to my parents, just with circumstances, the way they were, um, my parents left, you know, they were gone. And, um, so yeah. So at 14, I was really kind you of have sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we all were. So it affected everybody. Yeah, it did. And, you know, at that point <clears throat> when around like 14, 15, 14 and a half, you know, to the, it just became really not safe to be real visible. You know, it was, uh, you know, to be a sort of a, a, a very well taken care of young woman, you know, like I had a very comfortable home, you know, I didn't, I didn't have street smarts or anything like that. The, um, and then to be in a situation where I'm fending for myself, I'm in situations where, um, you know, being a young woman and all that, um, poverty, those situations. And um, so I stopped singing. I stopped singing. I stopped writing. Um, I did a few drawings uh, during that time. And they're intense, you know, they're really oh, intense. Oh, sure. I, yeah. I came across one the other day and it was like, whoa, you know, but it really showed me you know, as a reflection of, uh, and now, you know, what I say to my clients that I help, you know, with expressing and opening their voices and opening their dreams, you know, um, I just say, sing through everything. It's like, just sing through it all, write through it all, create, because it will be a lifeline, you know, mm. it will, it will hold you. And um, how'd you get through it all? Was it through writing and through music? You know, there were a couple years there where I just didn't, it was hard. Like I, it was tough getting through it. And, um, yeah. Were the brothers the, just, were you all together or is everybody dispersed? No, it really, we all kind of scatter beamed at that point. Um, like my little sister that she was 13. So mm. by the time she was on her own, it, she was 14 and she had her own little apartment and she was working and like, you know, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's kind of crazy, but the, yeah. So I came out of that with a lot of rich, um, you know, a lot of rich things. The, my first album, you know, that I came out with years later, I, well, let me back up. I, I had this amazing opportunity years later. So it really wasn't until I started, um, oh gosh, probably 10 years later mm. that I came back to singing, maybe even longer. And I was doing art. Wow. Before, so art your before. voice in many ways was gone, gone. Your inner and, voice too. Yeah, yeah. My inner voice, my confidence, you know, I mean, just all of that. And, and then I had this amazing opportunity to go to Egypt. And it was like one of those things of like, there's no way I can go to Egypt. My mom was like, could you, my mom had come back into my life and, um, and, and she said, could you go to Egypt? I'm like, no way. I don't have the money. I've got two kids. I'm like, you know, like this is, there's no way. And, and I actually meditated on it. She said, now go meditate on it. Cause my mom was that kind of seeker. 
And I said, all right, you know, I'll go meditate on it. And I had one of the most profound meditations I've ever had. Mm. Uh, that meditation like literally spoke to me. And it was like the Sphinx. And the Sphinx said, go to Egypt. <laughs> you know, it's like, there is no yeah. question. You yeah, must we're... do this. Mm -hmm. And it said, your life will change. And and it said, that's what, maybe that's what I heard when I drove alone through death. I was propelled to drive alone through Death Valley in a rental car after a TV shoot. Sort of that. I was being pushed in by things larger than myself. I, I say it was the energy of the earth. It was mother nature and, and, and a divine that yes. were saying you're the time is right. Go, Let's you got to go. go alone. Don't go with family and friends. Just go in. It's risky. You're in a rental car. Nobody knows. Just do it and see what happens. And I did at life changing on many levels. Uh, yeah, but I was, I was, I was led there the car was like a twilight zone thing driving itself to the entrance and we went in. Yeah, it was. And there was an energy. There were energies that were apparent that were beyond me yes. that were at play at play. Yeah. 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 That's incredible. Not everybody I think has that opportunity or has those gets the gift. I've been told it's a gift, the gift of experiencing something like that, where there's an, the vision the road there's the road right there there's death valley and there's that road go in and yeah. see what happens you'll come out changed yes um yes beautiful it sure did yeah and the the whole thing of like one being quiet enough to hear the message you know and two uh, he you have to be alone having yeah. the courage having the courage to to say okay i'll do it you know this this doesn't make sense or it, it all of that and um yeah you know, so in this situation, I ended up going and just by chance then um, some a professional harpist was doing uh, sound studies in all the temples along the Nile in this in this trip. And she asked for singers. She wondered if there were singers who could sing in these temples and so that she could study the tones, you know, the pitches and see which pitches were the most powerful because they, they had a theory that the different temples uh, were designed for sound and were designed for certain tones. And oh, my mom and I were like raised our hands. And so my mom and I together sang, I sang and wept really for three weeks, almost a month through mm. all the temples. And, and then we what finished feeling. Oh, grief for having lost my voice. Uh, just ecstasy on that. I'm back. Like I can do this, like remembering my dream. You know, I just, I think I, I was so traumatized that I just, I forgot it. You know, I, it just wasn't safe. There was no energy for it. It was like, oh, those don't happen. You know, dreams don't happen. And something was saying, <laughs> look, you have so much more to give, so much more to do, so much more to share. Uh, yeah. And it's too powerful to stay suppressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they, the trip ended with us in the King's Chamber in the pyramid. They closed us in overnight. And we sang and sang and sang and did ceremony. And, and it really was, you know, my ceremony was just really around, please open me, you know, liberate me to be more, in, you live my dreams, more open person. And um, I love the word liberate. Yeah. Yeah. And I came home. What's that? It was a liberation for you. It yeah. really was. And then came home and it took me about a year and a half, almost two years to really get back my voice. Yeah. And in a cry, there were a lot of tears in it. There was a lot of just like, oh, was the voice it... physically not willing to yeah. atrophy? Express? It did. Yeah. And, and, you know, so now I work with people and help them move through opening their voices because I love doing it because of what happened to me, you know? You've so been there's, there. yeah. I've been there. And when somebody comes in, they're like, oh, yeah, everyone told me I couldn't sing or, <clears throat> my sister's the singer or, you know, whatever the sort of the dynamic is that's got them held back or they had a, a bad experience, you know, with it, that it's like, oh, we get to work with their bodies and where are they holding tight and where, how can we open this? And, and again and again, the liberation is so magnificent. Just, uh, it really gives me huge, huge pleasure to, to help someone open their voice. It's really amazing you say liberation. The reason why I picked that word out, 
that's one of the things I say when I tell that Death Valley story, because I was after, you know, we were on a TV shoot and coming from the east to Vegas. And then we drove out to a uh, desert town in Nevada and the shoot had ended. Everybody wrapped and the camera people went back to L.A. And I went, you know, I was going to go back to the hotel until my flight from Vegas went back east. But I had, you know, some extra time. I had like a day and a half left. So I took that rental car, drove around the desert town. Prompt, Nevada, beautiful little place, and uh, explored. And all of a sudden, the car kept taking me to Death Valley's entrance in August of all times to go to Death Valley. <laughs> and everybody's like, what are you kidding? First of all, it's August, Jim. You don't do that. Uh, and a rental car, nobody knows you're going. No family right, right. on the planet knows you're doing it. And you don't have the supplies. You don't have the water, the double-charged cell phones, flares, yeah. whatever you need. Uh, and you're in a rental car. You only know the make and model. Um, but one of the things that happened and you say, the reason why I'm in touch with the word liberating is, um, the first 20 minutes became liberating for me because when I first went in, um, when I was sort of pushed in and allowed myself to go in, um, I had a self-imposed guilt that nobody was imposing on me. I was imposing it on myself that loved ones and friends were not in the car experiencing this with me, seeing what I was seeing visually, experiencing the monumental nature of, for the first time ever going into a death valley, which you've seen in movies and on TV and everywhere else. And now here it is in front of you and you're going in it. That's something that should be with the whole family. You know, it should be a Brady Bunch situation and kids are in the back of the station wagon. Oh, ah, you know, that type of situation <laughs> with everybody. There was none of that. It was just me. So uh, those energies that you're talking about, the, in this case, divine mother nature and and uh, the power of energy of the earth, because it was stripped earth. It's the desert. Mm. My go-to is the ocean. I love the ocean. We're on the coast. Swim, surf, boogie board, sail, all those things. Grew up near the ocean. We're just a couple blocks from it now. I'm an ocean person. This couldn't be ocean, couldn't be city, couldn't be forest, or couldn't be a garden. Couldn't be anything where there's a uh, hustle and bustle. It had to be the stripped earth for me to get this. And I was feeling really guilty that I was experiencing this and wasn't sharing it because I like communal and I like to share. And uh, none of that could have happened. Nobody could have gotten on planes quick enough to get there in time to join me. Yeah. So those, uh, those energies gave me the option. You can turn the car back or you can keep going and rely on us. You don't really see us, but rely on us and yourself. And get in there and just do it and see what happens. And that's what I did. And the further I went in, the more liberating it became mm -hmm. because that self-imposed weight that I was not sharing this monumental experience in life with family and friends, with others, so I can hear their oohs and ahs and their, Jim, look at that. Oh my God, this is so much fun. Well, I'm facilitating that for them. There was no chance of that. This was uh, my situation, my experience my gift right. so i went in further and that weight lifted mm. which was amazing it was liberating that's the word i use and um it was really extraordinary when yeah. i came out of it uh, doing it all the way there and all the way back it was gave me a couple of three things or maybe four one is uh i never really created any boundaries and now i have boundaries I never had any boundaries. I know uh, this story chokes you up. It chokes everybody up all the time. <laughs> everybody gets choked up with this. I, I'm going to take my little. little <laughs> yeah, that's it. She's all choked up. She's she's understanding. Yeah. <laughs> I am understanding. You know, it, it. when you talk about the energies, I mean, I really think that there's, you know, we're a vibratory situation here. Actually, know? the vibration is important. Yeah. Yes. Everything vibrates. And that's right. So it's all. Chair vibrates. Yeah. So it's all happening and that mm -hmm. that would guide us or play us. You know, the, some of the most wonderful experiences I've had singing are when I feel like I'm being played rather than yes. I'm just playing or I'm that it's like, no, oh, now I'm just I, it's it a, it's a discovery to me what's going to happen. Yeah, right. So yeah. I, I, I now I've learned to be able to create boundaries which I never did. I never had, I was always sure I'll be right over. Yes. Don't, don't, don't matter. I haven't eaten or slept yet, but don't worry about it. now I've got boundaries and people are like excited that I have boundaries. They're like, 
You should have had boundaries years ago, Jim. That's my, <laughs> that's my family saying that, you know, mom yes. and the rest are like, you should have had boundaries. And uh, also that I realize you have to have the oxygen mask on you first before you uh, put it on others. Whenever I'm on the plane, I always think that that's selfish and egotistical. Put it on you first. No, no, no. We were raised, help thy fellow neighbor. Put it on them first. Help them and then do you. Now I know you have to do you and they have to do them. So we have enough, enough oxygen to help each other. Yeah. boundaries, the oxygen, the world will continue to spin on its axis, whether I continue to try to rescue it all the time and put out mm -hmm. all, all the fires. Um, and the last one is that there will be sometimes experiences like being thrust into Death Valley, driving through it in August in a rental car alone. And that is a gift that was meant just for me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be necessarily always with the family and the friends and the the colleagues and the buddies or whatever. It, there's going to be some times where you're driving on the highway and there's a shooting star and you're the only one, the only one that sees it. Yeah. And that's just the way, and that's a gift. So a gift. those are some things that actually came out for me from doing that Death Valley situation on you know, not rehearsed, scripted. It wasn't planned, uh, which is kind of cool. Like Egypt Very for you. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it I only can't. happened about three and a half years ago. So it's still, oh, I'm still on oh, that wonderful. high so of it. Still really. It's still. Well, and I think with these things that really are life changing like that, they last forever. You know, like yes. you may feel that like in the three years, but it, it, it grows on itself and, and it goes, it, it, it just blossoms, I guess would be the way that I would say that that liberation. And yes. That, um, it's attracted all kinds of fabulous energy too. Yeah. And like what you said about your family and, thing, you, this is great. You know, like you should have done this long ago. It's funny. We think that it's selfish, but it really is like it fills the self. And so then your self that you bring is you know, that much stronger. So I have I, asked that question actually of folks uh, that I've interviewed professionally. And I'm like, why didn't that happen earlier? You know, when I was like 18 or 25 or whatever. And they said, uh, well, you probably wouldn't have been ready for it. You wouldn't have noticed it. You might've shunned it. You had to experience life as is, and then have this gift come your way. And that yeah. makes sense. You know, it, the time sometimes comes when it's supposed it's, to. Yeah. You yeah. know, right timing, right timing. So, sure. uh, so music and art and poetry are so central for you. When did music and the singer songwriter part of your life really start to take hold? And what were some of the opportunities? Maybe there's a one or two that were really crucial and door opening for you mm -hmm. for the career to be taking off and also for people to notice how amazing you are at it. Mm, thank you. Well, it happened, you know, took off right after Egypt. So right after that, I, I, I got super dedicated. I was like, I'm a singer songwriter. I've always been a singer and I'm, I'm back. And after about that year and a half of developing my voice, taking voice lessons, um, I, I started to sing out professionally and, um, <clears throat> yeah, in fact, my first art show that I did, um, was also one of my first singing shows. So I, I sang and did art at the same time and, um, yeah. And then that moved on, you know, from little coffee houses or little bars, you know, where I started and, and, and you never know. I mean, things come from, from, left and right. And, you know, I'd, I'm always delightfully surprised by how things unfold, especially when I get my grip off of them and I get my control off. And, and instead I move into like, Oh, well, how, how is this going to, how might this happen? Um, you know, we were, you were talking about red rocks at one point mm -hmm. and the, you know, that was an amazing experience. I mean, every singer wants to sing at Red Rocks. I mean, that is, it's just an astounding, you talk about the beauty of Colorado. I mean, it is what happened there. I mean, it's just this gorgeous, beautiful space. And when natural, you know, natural carved by the earth and the water and the wind and yeah. And 
Yeah, and the way that the audience sits, you know, they they sit and they watch the the moonrise. The acoustics you know, are incredible. The acoustics are amazing. And have you been to the Colorado uh, Muse, Music Hall of Fame there too? That's I have what, not. It's I need to go there. there. The Colorado Music Hall of Fame is right there, mm. right, literally next to, oh. um, and, and they celebrate Colorado legendary music artists. Yeah, all kinds of exhibits friends, and everything. Yeah. It's fabulous. Yeah. I have a yeah. few friends that have made it in there that, um, yeah. So, you know, that was definitely one of the places and, and, and what was striking about it, <clears throat> you know, when I first started in my career, I was always sort of looking up, you know, like how the people that have the power or they have the good gigs or, you know, stuff like that. And I started to learn that so much comes through the back door, you know, like there's, and, and I got red rocks through one of my clients Yes. Yeah, I was, I mean, it was just someone I was yeah. helping, you know, was like, oh, you'd be perfect for this. I'll talk to these guys. And and I ended up being in this festival, you know, that played there. <clears throat> and that was such a great lesson for me. It, it was like, ah, oh, just to remain open, like all mm. the way around. Like, mm. I think one of the things that's happening in our culture right now is that whole uh, sort of go after it. You got to get it. Like there's sort of an aggressive thing to it. And yeah. And yeah. what is it to relax you just know, maybe breathe just yeah breathe and, and maybe even draw things in and appreciate Savor. more and have right a sense of of uh, what yeah. do i have already one and that's right and two like oh well maybe it'll come to me like i know that this is what i want and i'll do the next right step you know you don't just sit exactly. around right well then, I say it all the time that we're, we're so, you know, 24 seven and, and, you know, all of this stuff, social media, just all these things that are 24 seven, go, 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 do, 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 connect, 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 blah, 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 blah. Constant, constant, like a mill yeah. that never closes constant. And that's not necessarily good for the psyche. And it's not good for the mind, body, and spirit. We all need to unplug. Sometimes we all need to, what we, a lot of people don't do anymore is when something happens, like you experience something, we don't stop and revel in it a little bit before we move on. I know yeah. it's very emotional, isn't it? It's making you tear <laughs> up. I know that happens often on our show. That's levity. That's levity. That's levity. We're, we're tearing up. You said you didn't uh, know how deep we were going to go. <laughs> no, it's it's we're so fast paced now that we don't take time to. Uh, it shouldn't take a pandemic for mm. us to realize the importance of the little things in life, the simple things in life, how short it is, how precious it is. And also we need each other, kindness, empathy. You and I were talking about that before we went live on the air, sharing the art, sharing the music, sharing what we do, communicating with others, but also um, taking time. It's almost like you, you got a report card and you got all A's and there's no time to yeah, celebrate it. To yeah, savor. You, you've just won the Olympics and there's no time to savor it. You got to go to yeah. training in the morning for the next one. I like to, I need and require when we're coming out of the movie theater and the Titanic just sank in front of us, I need to have that little bit of a period to soak that in, feel it, yeah. live through it, and then go on to the next. Because that stuff like that, Death Valley, any of this, mm. Christmas Day, whatever it is, I need to, I want to feel that. And then revel in it a little bit more, and then let's go out and uh, bring it on. You know what I mean? Yes. We, we we're moving, I, we're so fast paced now. I so get what you mean, and you know what? <clears throat> what I think is uh, part of the problem is like if you think of an arc of an experience, like a, an arc of a project, you know, arc of cre uh, something creative that you choose to do, and so we initiate the project, and we're like, okay, we initiate it, we initiate an experience, we have it, we go through it. But when we get to the end, we don't let the end happen. And I think that we're, I think that we're scared of endings, you know, probably a fear of death or, you know, fear of loss. And, and with that, it's like, what is it to let something end, you know, to really be like, oh, okay. And that's done. So what is it to celebrate that moment? What is it to, you know, just even recently, um, we just sold out like the kick kickoff show, you know, that we're doing at E-Town in Boulder and on February 25th. And Congratulations. Just, yeah, thank you. And we sold it out and it was like, okay, great. What next thing? You know, and it was like, wait a minute. Yeah. You know, they, it, just enjoy. You haven't even done that one yet. And now yeah. you've got to. Like, like, what is it to, 
<coughs> sit back and just enjoy that. So I think there is something about letting ourselves truly finish. Exactly. Yeah. Tell us about your music, your <laughs> style, your vibe, what your message is and, and how you describe it. It might not even be something that is describable. I know you can't really box in and label things because you know, you're growing and changing and incorporating a lot of different things, but is there a certain sound that you describe in the Rebecca Folsom sound? Hmm. Well, I think Colorado this is roots, Americana. Yes. Americana for sure. And I'm going to do a little, I've got a little something in my throat. Do you? Yeah. All choked up. Is that like a NyQuil, DayQuil yes, kind I of got, thing? It's not NyQuil, but it's a little thing to coat my throat. Like a DayQuil time? Um, I'm getting over something. So. Oh, you are, huh? Yeah. And then you got the foot of snow outside. <coughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to pause here one second. Fill yeah. up my water. One yes, you fill up the water. No, okay. no, we, it's, we no, no, this, okay. to see the chair is, you know how many, do you know how many guests chairs we have seen on this show? It's incredible. I mean, almost every single guest, there's the chair. That's a cool chair. It's got sort of like an angle. It's a new color. chair. It's a I new chair so just for our show, huh? Comfy chair. Guests, you know, sometimes a child runs in the room or a dog does, or they want to go get the Oscar or the Emmy and show it to us, or they got to go grab the guitar. So we just see this chair and there's this running joke with our viewers. I said, one day I'm going to take snippets from all the episodes where we've seen the guest chair. We're going to do sort of like a, can you guess which guest sat in that chair? Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we've we seen leather couches. We've seen some oh, nice. velvet like we're chairs and yeah. We've seen some really cool stuff, um, but that's I'm gonna a cool put the guitar in it while I left. So that would be, you know, yeah. <laughs> it could take over the chair. Yeah, that's it. You drinking a lot of tea for that too? I yeah. have and yeah. lots of fluids and everything. I'm gonna drink a little more. So uh, you were talking about yeah, Colorado roots, Americana. Yeah, Americana folk, you know, is where um, <clears throat> I went through a bit of time playing blues. Yeah, and I love gospel. Yeah. I think gospel music is um, just so exalting. Yeah, yes. just a, You know, it definitely, it's okay with the grieving and then it moves into exaltation. So for me, As, gospel. Yeah. we can see exaltation ah, here, picture. huh? <laughs> Where was this, Rebecca? Um, that was at one of my favorite, it's a music series. Uh, they have about, I don't know, a few thousand people. And I play with my band and it, it's just, uh, it's a treat to play. It's just, it's one of those when you look out at the audience, they're all, they're all sort of vibrating and uh, moving, you know, with you. It's almost yeah. like the love enterprise lifts off. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah. Super, super great. This has got another shot here. This was terrific. I love this. It's, oh, you know, yeah, that's have guitar, awesome. will travel. That's Rebecca. That's in Austin, Texas. Is that in Austin? Mm -hmm. Barton Springs. Austin's a really growing, thriving place now, isn't it? In the recent years? Sure is. Unbelievable. It really is. That's a great shot. This one is too. Oh, you know, that's interesting. That shot was taken. Um, it was a really, it was a learning experience, that, that show. <clears throat> I had been asked by friends to do like a free, you know, it, it was a benefit for yeah. abused kids. And I was standing on top of this balcony and there were about 300 people all down below and nobody was listening. And, you know, and <clears throat> I don't, you know, I do concerts anymore. I don't sing to bars. I don't, you know, I don't have sort of the non-listening audience. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really into the lyrics. I, you know, I want people to hear the stories. Hear it and feel it. Yeah. And so I was doing that show and this is uh, after I had my epiphany, but, and I was getting mad. I was actually like, Oh, why am I here? Why am I doing this? You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, Come on, and, people. <laughs> and then I thought, Oh my goodness, Rebecca, like, what are you going to do? Fight this situation for two hours? You know, right. why don't, why don't every note I sing have be a blessing on everybody? Like, I'll just like, a, let the music be a blessing. Like every note. Tell them and, more kindness. And it'll fall on their heads. And, you know, and they weren't mean. They were just, they were just doing 
the, what they were doing. Whatever I they were doing, above yeah. them, you know, it was just, it was a, you know. They're scrolling all their cell phones. Yes. <laughs> you know, they're just doing what they need to do. Yeah. And, um, and in it, the, what happened when I did the, um, sing the blessing, um, they started looking up. Like all of a sudden they started connecting and yep. they looked up and I finished a song and they all applaud and they're like, Rebecca, you know, and it was, it was all of a sudden the loop of love happened. <clears throat> and it was, it's that same thing we were talking about earlier about like and like, and what is it when I resonate something, when I am a vibration of something and if I am that vibration of blessing, then they tuned in like, and then they blessed me back. I mean, what a, uh, it was such a great experience. It That's really, full circle, huh? It, it was. And it really was just one of those where I saw it happen so quickly in the yeah. moment. I shifted my vibration, uh, you know, what I was doing there. Which yeah. is fantastic, which yeah. is awesome. Super fantastic. This is cool too. And the way the. Um, oh, that's now, in my house. Now, you know what I see right away and you probably do too. The wings. Now, Yes, I see <laughs> the wings. I see a wing to the right of you, wing yeah. to the left of you in those pink puffy clouds. I immediately, so I tend to see a lot of things in, well, I humanize inanimate objects, but that's a whole other episode. <laughs> I could bring it, I could bring a chair to life. Uh, ah. But I do that with the clouds. I see so many things in the clouds mm. and usually I'll point to folks and say, look at that. That's the shape of, you know, Canada or take a look at this. And it's amazing what you see in the clouds. Do you think that now this might be going in a different direction, but do you think sometimes <laughs> some of the formations in the clouds are a message? Mm. Cause those look like wings. Yeah. I mean, I is, I don't know if they're messages as much as what I get is there's a, uh, there's a feeling to them. And yeah. this, this was one of those of just like, there was magic afoot, you know? Yes. Was, and, and so, and I was out there playing my guitar and then yeah. my, my sweetie said, well, let me get a picture of you. And so we took this and we're like, oh my goodness. And the silhouette was kind yeah. of, yeah, the silhouette of the trees and you. And the reason why I say that with the wings and the power of the wings, because I know you have an affinity for wings Yes. As evidenced here. <laughs> I love that photo. Oh, that was oh so fun. She, was you're fun. hanging from the strings, right? You're actually above the rafters there. I was with this amazing group called the Frequent Flyers. I thought you were going to say Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> well, they kind of are like that. They're dancing and they're on the, you know, they're on trapezes and they're swinging and they're doing all different things. And they were doing it to my live music. And, and I said, well, I'll do this. Like they said, would you do this with us? And I said, I'll do it if I get to be up in a trapeze. And Look they that, did, huh? they, we, they worked it out that, you know, I hopped up there with my guitar, I got in, I have a little microphone and, uh, and it was an absolute pleasure to be up in a trapeze while other people are dancing and singing in trapezes yeah. to my own music. I mean, it was, Same. that was that's I say, there's that a theme here. There's definitely a theme in your life, I say, huh? <laughs> there he is. You know, it's, it, actually, there's a lot of flying in my songs, flyings and wings and rising above. And yeah, so a lot of that. That's cool. Yeah. On Thank the wings you. Of love. Thank you. That was fun to see those. I haven't seen those in a while. Oh, yeah. We have a few more. This is a cool <laughs> shot, too. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Where was this taken? That, that was taken... At this You're wonderful, looking very happy old, there. It's an old little church. It's called Risby Church, and it's actually one that I painted and I gave it to my mother. Uh, it, it's just one of these really special little places. And um, I was there playing my guitar, and um, my friend took a shot, and that that was that. And you know, I think that shot is it exemplifies what we're talking about about savoring. Mm -hmm. allowing ourselves to savor the moment you know the the light was so beautiful the music and i love my friend and you know it just it was just one of those moments where and she caught me savoring she she caught me <laughs> that's it perfectly that's a good shot too of you performing and doing your thing yes yeah i know what that is that's a shot when i'm singing the song mercy which is one of the songs on the album yes and that's a key song we're going to talk about that this is a great shot too Mm, thank you. Thank you. I love that one. Those boots are awesome. Aren't they? They're my lucky boots. 
They've uh, got they, like horseshoes. <laughs> where was this taken? Uh, this was taken near Denver. So in between Boulder and Denver. Yeah. Just at a little, little shop, you know? Yeah. There. That is yeah. so cool. That's really great. Yeah. The album, there it is, Sanctuary. Tell us about it. What was the inspiration? I know the area, nature, all that we were talking about. Let's talk a little bit more about what inspired you to create this fabulous album. Yeah, you know, the the deep, the real through line of it was what we were talking about earlier, helping people find their voice. And mm. I was thinking about, well, what are the communities, you know, in our world that are undervoiced? There's and, a lot, yeah. Um, yeah. And so um, I just saw Kathleen say something. So that was a nice little message. Great photos. photos. Love it. Yeah. They all loved. Yeah. Love oh, thanks, Maureen. Um, yeah. And um, let's see. Where was I? I, I got distracted by, by the beautiful. <laughs> the love it threw you off, huh? The inspiration oh, for the album. Inspiration. Yeah. For yeah. Sanctuary. And, and it was so it was to work with undervoiced people. And, and to bring their their stories and their message to the mainstream. You know, I felt like I am lucky. I'm, you know, I'm gifted with stages. Like I get to broadcast my sound. I get to be on stages. I get to be on TV. I get to be, you know, the, that kind of thing. And and why not, you know, the people that are in the shadows that we're not seeing them, we're blind. You know, if we're living in the mainstream, we don't often see the people that are homeless or we don't see the people that are uh, mentally ill or um, the, the refugees or, you know, just all the different kind of communities. And so with that, I thought, well, uh, what I want to do is I want to do workshops, open your voice workshops with these groups and from those workshops, tell stories and then work with people to write the songs. So um, so we have 13 songs on the album and I would say 10 of those were written with communities. So written with uh, prisoners, you know, one of them, one of them was written with um, a refugee young woman after she was in one of my workshops. I, I did uh, teen workshops with kids that had just come over from Syria and, um, and Congo, the Congo. Mm -hmm. And they, they're escaping war, you know, I mean, these yeah, guys have yeah. just been through so much and, you know, it really course, happened in Turkey. Oh, oh goodness. 41,000 you know, people. And Turkey is where all the camps are, you yeah. know, I mean, this is so like, these guys are fleeing some situations and then they're in these camps and, you know, Rukaya, who co-wrote one of the songs on the album, um, she, you know, her sister's still there in Turkey. And in fact, I just saw her the other day because we're getting ready for this big kickoff show and she's going to come sing. And, 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 you know, so I worked with the undervoiced communities, but I thought if I just work with them, it's, you know, how far can I get? Why don't I work with uh, nonprofits that are already doing great work in, in these areas? So IRC international rescue committee came in and opened the door for me to do these workshops, you know, with the kids and everything. And, and these kids, you know, language barriers and mm. teenagers. Yeah. And from there, the, you know, like in the beginning of the workshop, they were really not into it. And by the end of the workshop, they were, I could not get them off the stage. I mean, they, they were, loved up, they loved it. They were singing. They were telling their stories about their grandmothers. They were dancing. Uh, it was so beautiful. And, you know, when, when a safe, when you create a sanctuary space, you know, when, when we make an effort, each of us to do that, people want to tell their stories. They you are know? dying so, to write. Yeah, especially if there's something to unwind and heal, yeah. you know, with right. it and, and to be heard and for their, for what they've been through. You know, I think it's a very human thing. So anyway, they, you know, just experience after experience after experience. I, I wrote, I worked with, oh, probably 18, 20 different groups as far as writing songs. Yeah. We, we ended up only using 10 for the album. Um, you know, we just pick, we, we kind of handpicked which ones felt like they fit for the album on that. Yeah. And, you know, my mission was always to create beauty. You know, it was to bring some truths, you know, that maybe aren't the truths we normally hear. And to do that with just this beautiful sonic landscape, to, to do it through beauty. 
and hopefully touch people's hearts. Rooted in folk and gospel and produced by three-time Grammy-winning producer Tom Wassinger and six-time Grammy-winning producer Sean Martin. That's incredible, huh? You surrounded yeah. yourselves with some top talent. Yes. And Grammy nominated producer Mark Oblinger and Grammy nominated producer. She just got nominated um, this Grammy season because she uh, worked with Beyonce um, wow. and Andrea Roberts. So she uh, worked on the women's the women's empowerment song. So That's incredible. huh? What was it like teaming up and working with all of them on this? Oh, fabulous. Heaven. Uh, they're, you know, wonderful individuals. They're so talented. Each one has genius in all these different ways. And what is it to get together with them and, and have my ideas, my creative ideas and run them by their ideas. And um, it's, it's an absolute joy to work with them really. And uh, you know, I, I what did, was I afraid, I, you know, I never felt afraid to work with any of these people. I, I they just all are such wonderful people. That's fantastic. That's yeah. really great. What was the process like putting it together? It's one of the hardest things when you're doing an album is deciding, narrowing down the songs. You got so many songs and then you've got to narrow it down to a certain amount to be able to yeah. fit on the album. That, yes, that, that was hard. painstaking, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, it was painstaking. I mean, it finally one day, it just all came together. It was like everything just kind of went, doo -doo 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 -doo, and this is the way it's supposed to be. Um, but for a while there was like, oh, how can I, you know, I had such amazing experiences working with people. It was like, how can I not put this on the album, you know, but, but we, we just decided we weren't going to do a double album. It, it was just too much, you know, to do all the songs. So yeah, that was very hard to make those choices very, and more because of the depth of experience that happened and how I felt honored to work with every person. I didn't, I didn't want, I wanted everyone to make it on, you know, there was that. Exactly time. right. How long yeah. did it take from the first, you know, ideas of inception to completion to actually complete the album? Is this yeah, something this, that you've been working on for years? Yes. For yeah. years. Um, this is the longest project I've ever, I've ever done. Um, yeah. The, you know, we actually thought, we, I worked with the refugees, worked with IRC, had the great pleasure of singing at Folk Alliance International to about 3,000 people presenting our song. And <clears throat> we thought, oh, that will be done in four months. You know, we thought this is great. Um, at that point, uh, one of the directors from the UN came up to us and wanted to book us for a, a world tour and just said, this is really beautiful. We want, you know, we want this message around refugees and, and cool. what other songs do and they loved Sanctuary, the song Sanctuary. And so it was like, great. All right. We were dialoguing. How are we going to do it? When's the, you know, what, what how's that going to work? And, you know, then the pandemic. <clears throat> and so game off, you know, that that was not going to happen. And um, not yet, you know, I, I'm going to call John and see if we can get it rolling again. Um, yeah. And so and then it's just everything had to flow. The, like you said, you know, timing. Mm -hmm. Timing is so, you know, and and in that, in the midst of that, my husband um, got sick. He got cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, and so it was like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That song that was on the album was written around that. You know, he's my sweetheart. I, I adore him. And he's my sanctuary. And How's he doing? Uh, he's doing fabulous. Right. They caught it early. They got good. it out. He's totally good. He's out of the woods, just completely out of the woods. Good. That's a blessing. It is a huge blessing. And that we thought, you know, well, there was a moment where actually in the surgery, they tore an artery and they had to open him up really fast and to sew it up. And we almost lost him in that. So it wasn't even the cancer that was getting him. It was that. It was and, the, yeah. yeah. So there, so there was this just huge gratitude that he's alive, you know, and then we're, we get to have another day with each other. Absolutely. I mean, what incredible reasons to have this album out and, and one of the title songs, Mercy. Mm. That's tell us about that one. Oh, mercy is a deep one. You know, mercy. I wrote that a couple times and that happened with a few of these songs where mercy is, you know, I wrote it and it just didn't feel like it went deep enough. Mm 
This is the one that was written with the homeless communities, the people who had experienced homelessness and, and then the homeless shelter, the staff and the counselors. And, you know, I, I had to drop in and uh, because of my own experience, mostly with my sister who experienced homelessness in and out for years with mental illness and homelessness. And, you know, and I had my brief stint with it when I was from 14 to 16 of really, you know, not being safe and not having a safe haven and all that. So I wrote the song the first time for them, you know, for the other people. And then it was like, you know, I've got to bring my own experience into this. And when I did, uh, Mercy was born. And and I'm so thankful to the homeless shelter, the people at the homeless shelter in Boulder, um, for making it possible for me to talk to people, to actually have a very cathartic experience being at the shelter that my sister was at. And like, oh, this is where my sister slept, you know, and this is... Um, and having him talk about what people are going through and the counselor talking mm -hmm. about it, it was a very, very deep experience and, you know, really opened, it opened my compassion a, a bit more. And, um, and even for myself, it did, mm -hmm. you know, I think that there were some places that I was sort of tough, like whatever, you know, people should just pull themselves up and I'm going to just pull myself, you know, and it's oh, like, you had to do that in a young age to have that tenacious way and resilience and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, learning to soften and everyone, you know, we have no idea how anybody gets into the situation they're in and it, you know, the, the judgments of that or the, or the blindness, like the blinders, you know, that we mm -hmm. put on and, um, you know, what is it to look, to just see people, right. to listen. And um, so mercy was born around that and around opening our hearts mm. in that way. That's yeah. beautiful. You've been on a mission, right? This is a mission for you. This is a calling. It's not just day to day. This is a deep calling for you. And all these things you do from the coaching to the poetry, to the art, to the music is all tied together. Mm hmm yeah, that it is. That it is. Um, I have a workshop that I teach and, and I, I, I can't even remember what I call it now, but, um, and I do all three mediums at the same time with people. And so we have one person sing or play guitar or whatever they're going to do musically. And then we have painters all lined up with easels and they paint to the music. So they're to let go of their minds and they paint to the music <laughs> and then we have people sitting behind that are writing poetry to the music and to what they're seeing visually. And they, those cool. workshops, oh, they are. They're, they're, the critic is just out the door. Like there's no room for criticism. Like it's so uh, fluid. Like the, you've opened spigots, you know, three creative spigots. And I've heard people in that workshop just say, I didn't think I could write. I didn't think I could paint, you know, and the way this was set up, they it just really worked. So people were able to access that. Yeah, yeah. And they're accessing parts of their brain and areas deep in that maybe they're not necessarily using on a day-to-day -day basis by listening to the music. And then each person's um, response to it is different than the other person sitting next to them, what they're feeling and what they're hearing and how they, the sounds, the auditory is coming in and coming out and they're expressing it through visual they're taking the audio and turning it into almost you know like video in a way and they're expressing it in a visual way which is really amazing um because a lot of times you know when you listen to sounds or in this case instruments music or voice um it creates shapes you can actually create shapes mm -hmm. in your mind and other visuals based on the sound of a cello or a flute yes. or a, yeah, I do it all the time. Well, and you're on to something. They've done amazing studies. Around... There's, a, there's a description for it. I forget what they call it. Yes, like there is, there's, a, there's an actual for, for the phenomena of what it is. Right. That there's actually when they play sound that the, I don't know if it was cells or molecules or something. And they, they actually organize into shapes with different music. Yeah. And it, just fascinating. And Isn't that cool. It, yes. And it just says so much about, you know, the one reason why I wanted to do this project was I felt that music could go to the heart in a way that talking doesn't, 
you know, that it's like this could bridge things or give a message or maybe share a story yeah. in a way that and only music can. Right. It's very healing too, very connecting, sort of a universal language, right? On many yes. levels. Yes. Yes. Speaking it is. of that, did you want to share some with us? I would love you to. Got that guitar. She sure. tuned it for us too, that. gang. She tuned, tuned up. We did a sound check and everything before going Let's live. See. We did a sound check and uh, she also tuned that puppy. Uh, Let's see if it's still in tune. And, and, <laughs> you know, with the snow outside. It Give it some Dayquil. <laughs> <laughs> um, Robitussin. In this oh, oh, that stuff works. Yeah, you it know, really it I was going to say it kicked right in for you, huh? It did. I'm so thankful. It's amazing. Yeah. That stuff still works. Yeah, just so people know, I wasn't like doing a shot of something. It was kind of cool. It was like, oh, that little red shot glass that she's got. She's like, we need a second. I got to go. Shoot. <laughs> it's a Robitussin. Cherry flavored Robitussin. This well, segment sponsored by Robitussin. <laughs> now, you and I are going to get like a year's supply, right? Right, right. <laughs> Robitussin, we'll take some. Hey, well, what else do we, what do we want? You know? Well, on every game show back in what, the 60s, 70s and 80s, they would always win a year's uh, worth of rice aroni, the San Francisco oh, right, treat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we get a year's supply of rice aroni. Or hamburger helper or something like that. Uh, Tell us about the, the beautiful guitar that you have. Oh, this beauty. Isn't she lovely? Here, I'll scoot back. You can see her a little bit more. Um, she is my buddy. You know, she's with me all the time. And uh, she's a super jumbo Gibson and a real workhorse and just has such a beautiful sound really really love her what would you like to play you know maybe i'll play mercy um uh i don't is there time to do two songs or, or just absolutely one? Okay. yeah no the audience loves when the guests sort of okay. do this kind of thing live it's okay, very special lovely. i love it too it's a Good. gift so this is mercy Here's Mercy with Rebecca Folsom on the Jim Masters Show Live. Standing on the corner, two homeless daughters, young eyes that have seen too many things. Shivering there with broken wings. Even now, the memory stays the rain was cold cut to the bone the kind you feel when you're all alone but the pain it hit even harder it was the look on the face of our father driving up in his car and choosing not to bother we can make angels sing or we can make them cry all the trouble that living brings can help but wonder why not mercy 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 for heaven's sake oh mercy Please heal this human ache. Well, I got out, but my sister's in deep. Lost her mind living on the street. Caught in the undertow of mistreating. Well, I built a fortress of succeeding. And lost track of her tender heart beating. Well, if she's gone mad, how is that? That I'm the one acting crazy. Like that night I dropped her last Christmas Eve. As the snow fell, she turned the key. To the storage locker where she'd sleep And I pretended not to see We can make the angel 
we'll sing or we can make them cry <laughs> with all the trouble that living brings can't help but wonder why not mercy 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 for heaven's sake oh mercy please heal this human now the choice was clear we brought her home before she departed going back to where we started with a prayer for the open heart this human mercy mercy for how we break oh mercy please heal this human pain. that is really beautiful that is really really that get touches the heart immediately huh thank you jim thank that you it really is stunning when you play it what 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 are you feeling what's happening to you because you you can see and hear that you're you're fully engaged you're 100 percent in yeah you know sometimes i cry when i oh, yeah. sing and the you know picturing some of the things that either happened you know in my life and or things that happened to other people and they shared them so it's, um, yeah, I mean, what I feel is, uh, ah, I feel deep in my heart, you know, I guess that's what, what it is. You know, I just feel a sense of wanting to convey to people like oh, choosing kindness, choosing kindness over and over again. And, you know, like we talked about not, not being blind, you know, to suffering, to other people's suffering, you know, and it doesn't mean that we need to go down with it or it, but we can bring our light you know, like we can open rocks and look into some dark places and, and shine the light. And we can do that inside of ourselves too, you know, for things that have happened to us. You think we've been going sort of in a wrong direction, like we've just been forgetting all those things that you just described. I mean, what you're, what you just did and what we've been talking about, mm -hmm. there's an, un, and I've had this conversation with a lot of people um, even folks that I interact with in my professional work on television and radio, that there is an undercurrent of momentum and energy of people who want things to, we don't want to just get rid of everything, but at the same time, we want to sort of come back to the compassion, the empathy, the kindness, the listening, nobody's listening. Everybody's mm -hmm. always talking and on the offense and, Either they're, yeah. too, they're too offensive or they're too defensive. There's no more middle. I'm a, I'm a Libra. So we're having a rough time because it's balance and You're harmony. Feeling it, right. We're trying to like bring in those on the offense, those on the defense. Yes. Like, Look, let's come together yeah. and slice up the cake for us all. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy stuff, but because, you know, we're trying to be harmonious and all. And yeah, yes. uh, you've got a message that I think a lot of people are craving and a lot of yes. people, you know, think, Oh, well, you know, we, it's never going to be like that again. We're not, we don't have time to be kind mm -hmm. and empathetic. There's no time. We have to just be number one and keep, keep things moving and, you know, flash and dash and bling and superficiality and all that nonsense that's going on. None of that means a thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, the what you're talking about, I, I really think it's as simple as shifting out of fear. You know, that it's like, what is it when we're in fear is when we have to jockey to get things or be aggressive or be heard because no one's hearing us or, you know, um, it it's one of those of like these different faces of fear. You know, are we in fear fight? Are we in fear freeze? Are we in fear faint, you know, or fear flee in things? And, you know, what is it to be present and <clears throat> shift? out of fear. You know, one of another uh, Katie Hendricks thing that she, she teaches these things called fear melters and um, they're beautiful. They're little antidotes, like ways to move your body to shift out of fear into flow and into love really, you know, the, and, and into like what we talked about curiosity, like a yeah. sense of what's happening here. And, you know, maybe something isn't for you, you know, like something might be happening and it's like, you may choose to walk away or say no, but it isn't, you're not fighting and doing it out of fear. You're doing it out of choice. Like there's this listening and a choice around, around it. So to me, it feels like so much of the arguing and all it is fear. Yeah. It's really, yeah. The fear of losing something or not being heard or loved or, or, or being on top, you know, being the right one, being, being you know, the right that. one, the number one, the best and you know, yeah. win or lose. Everything's always about winning and losing. And I'm not, how about just having fun doing it? Yes. Why does it always have to be a winner and a loser? Or how just win, win, win. How can we make it win, win? You know? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Um, yeah. You have another song for us that you want to do? I do. I have another one. This is the title track to the album. I mean, Mercy, <laughs> that's a home run, that one. That really Thank gets you. It gets you, you know. Thank you. We made a beautiful video of it, too, the, a music video. Um, and it's out on YouTube and everything. My, my brother made the video. And so, Did he really? Yeah. He does he do did. video and editing and all? He does. He does. Cool. And he's so you know, intimately involved in some of these stories that it was really wonderful to work with my brother, John Scott, his Cloud Nine, I think it's, it's called Cloud Nine Productions. And uh, it's a beautiful, very touching, like you add the visuals you yes. know, of, of the situation. It, it's actually quite powerful. Potent. Fantastic. Yeah. So um, I, I'm just so enjoying being here with you, Jim. Thank yeah, you. I'm loving it too. And you're wearing my favorite color, green too. Oh, See? green is the you're best. You're also, you're intuitive. You are intuitive. My favorite I'm a color. Pisces. So. My dad's Pisces. Yeah. I love green. It's the Irish part of me. Yes. Irish part of me. That's, See, we that's what that. it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so now all, now all we need is the mashed potatoes and we're in heaven. Right. We're all set. All set on it. <laughs> The whiskey, although I don't, I don't do yeah. whiskey anymore. But. Slancha, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so this is the title track to the album, and um, I actually had the pleasure of the recording was done in a renovated church in Dallas, Texas, and mm. with a a chorale, a, a choir um, called the Saul Gates Chorale, mm -hmm. and oh my gosh, talk about the talent! Like these singers, I mean, when they all started singing, I was like, why am I the lead singer on this? Like these guys should be the lead singer, and you know, I mean, I wrote it. There is that the. But, and I actually co-wrote this. This is another one that I wrote a few times. I was like, nope, we're not there yet until we got it, you know? And uh, I co-wrote this with Sally Barris out of Nashville. She's a hit writer out there um, and a dear friend. And um, and with Nick Forrester, uh, he runs E-Town, which is an amazing radio uh, show. And um, and Kim Cresselius, who is a fabulous piano player. So... Um, so you're going to have to envision the big choir with it. We will but... envision. <laughs> um, or, 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 or a vision. <laughs> or a vision. Exactly yeah. right. <laughs> All yeah, right. So this is Sanctuary. Here's Sanctuary, Rebecca Folsom. One voice rising in the darkness. One voice, no matter how small. One voice, each of us together, becomes the one voice of us all. One voice, one world, one choice, love, show us how we 
can make a sanctuary, a safe refuge, a high ground. One people living in one world, each act of love show us how and one world we are brothers and sisters one world it's really rather small one world ours to care for one world together a sanctuary for all and one voice one world one choice love show us how we can make a sanctuary a safe refuge a Ground. One people living in one world. Each act of love show us how. And every wall that we break down, every hand that reaches out, everywhere that love is found, we're building a new dream. Every garden that we tend, every broken heart we mend, every battle that we end, we're building a new dream. Ooh. Oh. Oh. we break down every hand that reaches out everywhere that love is found we're building a new dream every garden that we tend every broken heart we mend every battle that we end we're building a new dream love A safe refuge, a higher ground, one people, one world, each act of love, show us That's another knock it out of the park song. Thank you. Oh, oh that really is fantastic. You and know, then, people are saying there's elements in the sound of Joni Mitchell. Oh, and, well, yes, that's a compliment. Absolutely, right? Yeah. And I do hear that too. You've have you heard that before from people? Sometimes, you know, I get uh Joni Mitchell, I get oh Joan Baez sometimes. Yes. Um, I get uh Natalie Merchant sometimes yes and oh gosh who's the gal uh innocent kisses or uh oh i forget i'm forgetting her name anyway she's yeah. uh good friends with sean colvin and oh uh, yeah mary tape and carpenter that's oh mary tape that's absolutely yeah. right yeah. yeah everybody loving it too all the comments coming in they are absolutely mm -hmm. loving this mm -hmm. it's cool stuff Wow. Thank where, you, Jim. Thank you. Where can they get it? Is it Amazon, Spotify? Is it downloadable? It's all the platforms. Yeah, it's right? it's everything, but it's it isn't out until March 3rd. That's so March right. 3rd so is this is a preview. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a preview. Uh, March 3rd, it hits everything. It hits all the platforms. 
Um, people can get the hard copies too, you know, if anybody is still playing CDs, the, you know, the hard copies are so beautiful. We're going to make a special edition, uh, you know, box and we're also going to make a vinyl, uh, one. Oh, cool. Uh, that's come back and people are really enjoying that. You know, as an artist, it's so the canvas of the package is always so important to me. So, um, so that, you know, people can get the hard copy too. They can go to my website and, um, that that's all there, but you know, Apple, Amazon, iTunes, you know, all of it, 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 it will all be on every platform. How exciting is that too? And even the vinyl component, because vinyl and analog is, is making a comeback to a degree. I mean, I still have my turntable and KLH speakers that are this big and double cassette deck and Ankyo receiver right and, I have all that. And when you put that on, it fills. The, I love music that fills the room, fills yes. the house and sort of bounces off the walls and goes through different rooms versus, you know, having something shoved in my ears and just having it compressed and yeah. and just very digital sounding, just forced in the ear. I like when it's warmer and it's filling the room. I even like it when I'm in front of the speakers and the music's coming from behind, behind. me oh, and beautiful. coming up and over. There's yeah. just something about it when it's coming from behind or it's it's just off in the distance a little bit. It sounds so incredible. So, uh, yeah, I mean, with that Ankyo receiver, God, it, yeah. you know, it goes up to like, I don't know, 100 or whatever. But if you just put it on four, it can take the roof it off can, the house. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> you know, just that that fullness of the sound and the even you know, the digital they've done beautiful they've come a long way music as far as then the kind of speakers it, it comes through absolutely <laughs> right maureen yeah. says yay a sneak peek just for the loveities absolutely yeah, the <laughs> <laughs> all for it like let's lift it up let's that's it, it up. that's what it's all yeah. about you know who yeah. loves this too is somebody that stops on our show all the time stops by george burns is in the house george burns is always here with his cigar red hanky he's usually hanging out down, down below with his martini my aunt collected dolls and people always ask where did he come from she collected dolls had a big room filled with very expensive dolls got passed down to me george is here sends his love thoroughly enjoying the conversation feels the vibe loves the music and uh he sends He's his love. He's a man who knew how to live, George right? Burns, I tell yeah. you, right? Made it to the golden age. And yeah. uh, he sends his love from him and uh, Gracie. Everybody smiles when I put put up the George uh, yeah. here. He's, He's really one of the cast. Of, I tell you, one of the cast characters. And we also have, believe it or not, this was sent by Maureen in Arizona for Christmas time. We actually have a mini me. This is Mr. Lovett. Oh, are you this, a little bobblehead too? She, she, bobblehead? she had it made for Christmas. <laughs> oh, your head. Oh my God, that's great. There's the Mr. Lovety doll. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Oh. Mr. Lovety. So he's uh, he's been following along. What'd you think? Uh, he loved it. He, he he's a, he's amazed by it. He's absolutely like it. he's got his arms crossed. He, he's a mate. You loved it? <laughs> he absolutely loved it. He's Wonderful. he's going to go down below and hang out uh, with George down there and digest it. Digest yeah, he's going. Yeah, he's going to have the martini <laughs> with George. Uh, so you got to see uh, the Mister Levity and, uh, and George Burns. Um, this was awesome, my friend. This mm -hmm. was really uh, oh, so good to connect. This was you. Folsom awesome. <laughs> ah, Folsom that's awesome. A, you know, it's it's funny. I just you know Folsom Prison and all that. We we're going to be doing a show in the Colorado State Penitentiary this Saturday, and we got the okay. We're going in and everything. So it's uh, just make uh, sure you come out. <laughs> we're yes, that's the key. Make sure anyway, that it's not a one way prison. door. <laughs> Johnny Cash's Folsom Prison, you know. That's nice that you, do, yeah. so you do that, you entertain. Um, yeah, well, the whole mission, you know, continued is to come to your town, you know, and do, that's... and sing, and do, uh, are you in New York City? Like, yeah, is that well, yeah, we're right here in the Tri-State area, yeah. Oh, wonderful, because yeah. I played the Bitter End. In the suburbs, yeah, on the coast, yeah. Yeah, the Bitter yeah. End and the Oh, you did Bitter End in New York City? Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, you know, coming so out. playing a tour? 
Yeah, I, I don't have New York on tour just yet. We have a number of places in Austin and Nashville and, you know. So no like, like Northeast yet, like uh, not yet, but New York, Philly, to, Boston. We're going to do it. Boston and New Hampshire, I know, is we've got some things generating. And, oh, cool, and, yeah. And this we're not far from really Boston either. Yeah. Time to go to New York. So yeah, yeah, we're right there. New York, yeah. New York, there, Boston. Uh, yeah, everything close by here. Love we're it. lucky. We're fortunate here on the coast. Yes, uh, especially with the sixty degree weather we've been having in right. February. Right, enjoy that. Well, you've got it. You've got a foot of snow out there. We've been having yeah, sixty degrees. Snow, sun. It's still snowing, and when I got home, it was eight degrees. It's incredible. We, we, we've, you know, it, it's like 50 degrees right now and it's almost nine o'clock at night. And this is February at the time of this show. Unreal. We were blessed, but of course, you know, it's not over until it's over. It could be late February, March, like a lion, you know, we can right. get belted with a nor'easter. We get yes. the nor'easters, nor'easters. Come, up, <laughs> come up the coast and get us. Uh, Maureen says, excellent episode. Thank you for being with us this uh, evening, Rebecca, and sharing you, beautiful music with us. Please come back again soon. Yep, we've got the porch light on for uh, for Rebecca. She will be back with you. us uh, as you. well. Jane watching in Sweden. Thank you, Rebecca, for being with us tonight. Your song, mm. Mercy, will have uh, loaded it down. That's great. Downloaded it. That's great. Uh, yes. So actually, um, Mercy, we released as a single. So you that one you can download. So that's so that ready to go. Important. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. Kathleen in New York City, speaking of New York City, thank you very much for being here, Rebecca, sharing your music with us. This was awesome. Best of luck in all you do. I hope you feel better. Oh, as well. <laughs> I, I feel I feel fine. I'm just kind of getting over something. So. You're just getting over. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know how it incredible. takes forever. Yeah. yeah. And Maureen says, uh, Rebecca, the emotion you put into your songs has felt deep down. Absolutely beautiful. Really, really cool. 2.30 okay. in the morning where Jane is in Sweden and Pam Stubb says 70 degrees in Maryland. Oh my goodness. Not wow. bad. Not too yeah. bad at all. You're the best. Spread the word about the Gym Masters show for I us. Will. We love that. If you know folks you think would like to pop on, I, I hope you uh, enjoy we'll it. Oh, she said we when they lived in Maryland, Maryland, they always used Robitussin. <laughs> we got to get them to sponsor. I'd huh? be like, and Robitussin. And, and Robitussin. store close to you. That's right. <laughs> All singers use Robitussin. <laughs> and on-air broadcast hosts. Um, you be well. Thanks. I hope the show met whatever expectations you had and you oh, enjoyed the time with me as much as I absolutely have with I you, Rebecca. Did. Thank you for all you do, Jim. Just beautiful love, beautiful positivity. So thank you for oh, having me. Oh, the pleasure is mine. I think we are kindred spirits on many levels here, Rebecca. I think so huh? too. Thank so. Many Felt levels. Right Let's yeah. stay in touch and okay. uh, you're welcome back anytime. There's her website, gang. Check out the phenomenal website, RebeccaFolsom.com as well. Learn about all the cool things she's done and things she's doing. You're the best, my friend, new friend. We really appreciate all the time. And thanks for singing for us too. That was a blessing. Oh, what a treat for me too. So appreciate That's it. it. Now you get to lie down and go to bed. You've earned it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make some soup, some carrot ginger Ooh, soup. Carrot ginger soup? Yeah, I'm a soup person year round. I love good soup, right? Yeah, good soup. Yeah. That's it. Well, this is a foodie crowd. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you said share recipes, I was like, oh, maybe someone could share a good ginger carrot ginger soup recipe. You know who probably could? Somebody that we have coming on our show uh, this Sunday, the world renowned chef and PBS host Jacques Pepin. Oh. Uh, with us on Sunday. Yes. So okay. see if we can get a carrot ginger recipe uh, out of him. <laughs> I'm sure he's got several. Um, you're the best. You take care. And oh, uh, again, too, thanks yeah. for the music, the levity, the conversation, really, truly a blessing. And I know everybody was uh, truly touched by it as well. Thank you. Thank you. You have you a great keep going. Okay, my friend. I will. You too. Spread All the right. love. Yeah, absolute. You take care. Cheers. Okay. Ciao. Rebecca Folsom on the Gym Masters Show Live, entertaining us and also spreading some inspiration and empowerment and good vibes, which we love here at JMS, uh, with her message and her music. How cool, right? And her new album, which you got an opportunity to hear elements of exclusively in advance on the Gym Masters Show, right? Look for Sanctuary. That is the album, and it's going to be a hit. 
She mentioned, now you know when you see the cover, the story behind it, the birch trees and looking up towards the birch, really incredible. You also now know the backstory of the album. She got a chance to really share the meaning of the album all the time it took, years in the making. So now when you uh, get the music, whether through its download, Amazon, Spotify, iTunes, um, her website, everywhere else, Amazon, the whole bit, uh, you'll have a deeper appreciation for who she is and the music. Mercy, she said, is uh, downloadable now. She also sprinkled that into the mix as well for us, which I think was really, really cool. So yeah, this was really great. And she's uh, she is thoroughly enjoying life on so many different levels. And we got a chance to hear a lot of stories about a lot of different things and experiences in her life. Really, truly um, gifted too. She's gifted. She also was very open about her life, you know, the early years, which I think was uh, very kind of her because, you know, that's also very empowering when there's that relatability when people hear that uh, people go through things and that it's how they react to them and how they come out of them that really matters most. And she's also, you know, empowering people through her coaching work as well. You can learn about that at RebeccaFalsam.com as well. She's called upon often for that work, which is great. And her poetry and her you know, her fine art as well. It's all there. It's all available. And uh, you should literally right now go check it out on her website as soon as we are wrapped with this episode. I think you're going to love it all. We really appreciate her again, spending some nice time with us. Again, we don't rush things here at the Gym Masters Show live series. That's why we don't call these interviews. We call them conversations. We weave stories in and out and entertainment and our uh, brevity and levity, interaction with our viewers, the whole package you get here on this talk show, the Gym Master Show Live Series. Spread the word, tell your friends about us. We thank Rebecca for being here with us. If you enjoyed this episode, give us a like on our YouTube channel. That helps us grow. When you do that, we love it. YouTube sees it. They'll let the episode be seen by more people when you do it too. And drop a comment also. Drop a comment right underneath this episode. I know even those who have been chatting in the JMS Levity chat room exclusively, our subscribers, we thank you for doing that, but also leave a comment on the actual channel. When you do that, that helps us grow and these episodes get to be seen by more and more people. Hundreds of episodes that we have done so far in our series for all of you to entertain you and to inspire you and have a good time as well. You know, Nothing too crazy. We just have a good time here. Don't forget also to subscribe to the channel. Hit the red subscribe button, or if it's black, hit that. It says subscribe. Click the notification bell so you never miss any of our episodes. That's right. You'll get notifications about all the episodes, so you'll never miss anything, any of the action, anything at all. Kathleen in New York City says, terrific show and wonderful music. Thank you, Jim. You are very welcome. And everybody got some smiles coming from Pam as well and, and Maryland and everybody. Thanks for joining us, gang. Around here, you know, we don't say goodbye. We say see you later. Ciao, cheers. Uh, hasta la vista. Slancha. Um, cheerio. Moy loop. Avidizane. We say sayonara. Shalom. Take care. Be well. Love one another. Take care of one another. Be good to yourself. We shared some good stories, too, about uh, being good to yourself. Rebecca and myself sharing some stories with you. And don't forget to relax. We talked a lot about that. Again, there's that famous sign I got when we were on a family vacation in Newport, Rhode Island. And it was in the window. And I said, what a cool sign. We got to get that. And uh, sometimes we show it at the end of the show. So good stuff, gang. We love you all. Thanks for uh, stopping by the Gym Master Show Live. Just want to let you know real quick, we've got some extraordinary guests that are coming up. Yes. And, um, mm, we thank Rebecca for being here. And let me show you who else is coming out. We have tomorrow, Dee Dee Sorvino, Emmy-winning host, comedian, author, actress, wife of the late iconic film star, Paul Sorvino. You know, from Goodfellas and Redemption and Cosmos and Law and & Order and everything else. She's with us tomorrow. There's a special announcement, some fabulous wine and all kinds of cool things happening tomorrow 
So join us at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific as Didi Sorvino, wife of the late iconic film star Paul Sorvino, is going to be joining us tomorrow. And look who's making a return visit to the Gym Master Show on Friday. We're going to have a blast. Pepe Castro is back in the house. Rock and roll legend. One of the founding fathers of the famous, famous group, the Blues Magoos. He's going to be here. He's going to play live. We're going to catch up with him. He's a dear friend, actually. Uh, I've known him for a long time. He's going to be with us on Friday. There's going to be music. There's going to be laughs, interaction, all kinds of cool stuff. This is a JMS exclusive this Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Also coming up, Tim Gianni is going to be with us, award-winning author, reporter, editor, photographer, columnist. He's got a new book out, Pilgrims, Pickers, and Honky Tonk Heroes. He has been, since 1974, a writer, When he's interviewed Muhammad Ali, Hank Aaron, uh, countless, countless legendary people, Chris Christopherson, uh, you name it, Sheryl Crow, and he's very big in the Nashville music scene, country music and more. And he has so many stories to tell, and he's going to be coming to us live from Nashville with his new book, celebrating all the conversations and all of the incredible stories he has from his years in Nashville covering as an author, reporter, editor, photographer, columnist, all of these legends. He's going to be joining us too. And this weekend, yes, I actually was chatting uh, yesterday. We did uh, a segment with Jacques Pepin. This Sunday, we're going to air a very special episode with the one and only Jacques Pepin. Jacques Pepin is a wonderful friend. I interviewed him several times on PBS. He's done 12 PBS specials. He's done specials with Julia Child. He's an iconic, beloved chef, television personality. He has penned over 32 cookbooks, culinary educator. He, uh, for 40 years, was a culinary educator at Boston University, uh, Culinary Institute of uh, America, and so much more. And he's a brilliant artist. And this is an exclusive epic extended conversation that we're going to air this Sunday and you can interact with us. Jacques Pepin is going to be stopping by our show. He is one of the most revered, beloved, and widely known chefs in the world. Uh, He's cooked for three presidents of France, including Charles de Gaulle. Um, Yeah, it's incredible. His experience, everything. You know who he is. He's been around uh, for for decades, uh, seven decades cooking. He's now uh, 87. He lives along the Connecticut coast, where he has been since 1975. He's joining us uh, soon as well. So look for that. That's rare, special, and exclusive to have Jacques Pepin give us the time he's going to be giving us. So look for that this weekend. You're going to love it. It's really amazing. And uh, again, he's got a new cookbook out too. So we've got Didi Sorvino tomorrow. And then Friday, Pepe Castro is here. We're going to have a ball. And then also coming up, uh, Tim Gianni is going to be joining us. And Jacques Pepin is joining us. And all kinds of cool stuff. Wow. It's a lot of work putting this stuff together, I tell you. Um, Because this isn't even my full-time career. I do this stuff on the side. But we do it for all of you. And uh, Pam says we adored Paul Paul Sarvino. Um, Look for us tomorrow. Didi is going to be here. We love it. You guys are terrific. Uh, Maureen says uh, have a lovely night, everyone. Uh, Tight, lovely hugs right to you as well, Maureen. And uh, gang, if you're going to be sticking with us on our YouTube channel, stay here. Another episode comes up. You can binge watch hundreds of episodes. Enjoy them all. And uh, have a blast. Tell everybody you know about our show. Share the links on your social media. Spread the word for us. It really, really helps us when you leave comments, you like, subscribe, and we share the links on your social media. Hey, tune into the Gym Master Show. You know, our YouTube episodes, when you share them on your social media, it really helps us. Helps us grow, helps us expand, helps us keep widening the audience of love which is what we want to do. We want to continue to grow and expand and bring in the world with all of you. 
All right, gang, we're going to scoot off. We haven't had dinner yet, as usual. Nine o'clock at night, we haven't had dinner. You're the best, Jim. You're the best, Kathleen. And all of you are the best. Only the best on JMS. Love you all. Be well. Take care. Keep smiling. Do your thing. Be you. Stay you. And um, we will see you. We'll be back tomorrow with uh, the wonderful Didi Sorvino. We got Jacques Pepin coming up. And oh boy. And that's just the short list of folks that are coming up, gang. Just the short list. Be well. We'll see you. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know. Like, comment, subscribe. And we'll continue to deliver the best content we can as we digitally create these fabulous episodes of the Gym Master Show live series for all of you. Love doing it. Hope you're enjoying it. Be well and cheers.